Hi, welcome to this online course on cathodic protection engineering. In this lecture internal corrosion of oil and gas pipeline is not directly related to cathodic protection. The methodologies adopted for cathodic protection engineering is entirely different from the methodologies to control corrosion of pipelines internal surfaces. However, it is very relevant to these structures because whether it is a pipeline or it is a storage tank, they face corrosion externally due to soil and internally due to the various products that they transport in the case of pipelines or store in the case of the storage tanks. So, a perspective of understanding the internal corrosion of these structures is somewhat useful and therefore, I give you a broad outline of the internal corrosion of the pipelines in this lecture. In another lecture, we will be talking about the internal corrosion control as the anodic protection methodology, especially as applicable to the sulfuric acid plants. When you talk about the internal corrosion of storage tanks, there are variety of chemicals being used. So, it is not possible to cover the internal corrosion of the storage tanks. When it comes to internal corrosion of the pipelines, the two major kind of pipelines are there. One the transport oil and gas, other one the transport water. The oil and gas uh, pipelines when they corrode, the consequences are very severe. Safety is involved, environment is involved. So, lot of measures are taken in order to control the internal corrosion of pipelines in the case of oil and gas. Not only that, because it is an oil and gas, we have the flexibility to change by adding additives, but that is not possible in the case of water. So, in this lecture, we will be briefly talking about the factors affecting corrosion as far as the oil and gas pipelines are concerned. And then we briefly touch upon the preventive measures. Very briefly in about 3 or 4 slides, we will talk about what are the factors that affect the corrosion of the pipelines. These are the suggested readings for uh, the oil and gas uh, corrosion of uh, pipelines. One is the excellent chapter by Sridhar Srinivasan and uh, Darwin C. Eden. You can find them in the, the ASM handbook volume 13 C of uh, corrosion handbook. There is a nice review by Professor Nasik on the internal corrosion of oil and gas pipelines. He gives focuses, he gives focus on the modeling aspect of the internal corrosion and as well as monitoring of the internal corrosion of the pipelines. Let us look at how important it is the internal corrosion of the pipelines. We have seen this in the earlier lecture as well. If you look at the number of cases appearing in terms of failures attributable to internal corrosion, it is about 17.24 percent as per the US Office of Pipeline Safety that appeared in the year 2002. However, in look at the cost of damages that are occurring due to internal corrosion of the pipelines, it is about 15.23 percent. So, it is a significant amount of loss that happens because of the internal corrosion of the pipelines. Now, before we go into the internal corrosion of the pipelines, it is better to have some brief idea about what are the materials used in the pipelines. Uh, when I say pipelines, I refer these pipelines by default to oil and gas pipelines. The oil and gas pipelines are given this uh, API grades and you see here API for example, X52, it this 52 refers to the yield strength given in terms of uh, KSI uh, strength units. So, the 
pipelines of various strength levels have been developed in order to make them lighter, in order to save the weight of the steel required for making the pipelines. In all these cases, you would notice that the chemistry of the steels that are employed here does not very significantly change. Since the chemistry is not changed very significantly, you will see later that all these pipelines would have a similar corrosion behavior in the oil and gas sector. Subsequently, there has been another uh, steel API 5LX80 uh, where the strength level has gone to 80 KSI and the UTS value has gone to 95 KSI. Even over here, there are micro alloying elements in order to increase the strength metallurgists add to refine the grain structures and also to bring in the faces which are providing higher strength and ductility. Over here too, if you look at the composition of the steel, there is hardly significant increase in terms of elements like chromium which offers passivity. So, as a consequence, the corrosion behavior of all these steels are very much identical. And so, when you are going to talk about corrosion of iron gas pipelines, we are not going to distinguish significantly between these steels. There are of course some cases we will see later, certain aspect of uh, corrosion failures, they are related to the strength of the pipelines. So, these pipelines suffer the variety of corrosion problems and um, these problems like as simple as uniform corrosion, pitting corrosion, erosion corrosion, crevice corrosion and we also have three different types of environmentally assisted cracking and in this case the cracking is mainly due to the applied stresses. Um, of course, in the case of hydrogen induced cracking, we do not require any external stresses for the pipeline to crack. The hydrogen so entered in the steel produces, this, the, produces the pressure and cracking really occurs. Whereas, in the case of sulphide stress cracking and hydrogen embrittlement, the applied stresses play a dominant role uh, in deciding the susceptibility of the pipeline towards cracking. In addition to these kind of failures, uh, we also have some failures which are specific to pipelines which are called as top of the line corrosion failure. And in addition to that, we also have microbial corrosion and weld related corrosions. These pipelines are welded and, and these weldments can suffer uh, preferential attack as compared to the remaining uh, areas of the pipelines. Let us move on to understanding what are the factors that affect corrosion of oil and gas pipelines. We all know that the oil and gas especially let us say crude or maybe the finished products like kerosene or a diesel or a pure natural gas, they are not very corrosive, they are non-polar. How the pipelines suffer corrosion is due to the contaminants present in these products. Especially in the crude, you will see significant amount of water, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulphide, sulfur, oxygen content and chlorides. So, these species significantly change the corrosive behavior of so called the crude actually I would say. In addition to these species, sometimes you find some organic acids which are present maybe the result of decomposition of these um, hydrocarbons can also affect the corrosion of the pipelines. These are about the contaminants present in the crude. There are process variables, they also can significantly affect the corrosion, they involve the temperature of the product being transferred, fluid velocity and you also have sometimes multi, multi phase flow 
it could be gas or and um, a, a crude or sometimes water the crude sometimes there are other phases like the acids present in the crude gas to oil ratios and what is the ratio of gas and oil water to gas ratios is defined in terms of water cut and the oil type and how long the oil will persist on the surface of the pipeline. So, these are process variables that significantly affect the corrosion of the pipelines. The microbes that are carried through these products, they cause significant amount of corrosion they are called as microbially assisted corrosion, microbial assisted corrosion. There are two types of terminologies very commonly used in the pipeline corrosion which are which is called as sweet corrosion due to carbon dioxide and the sore corrosion that is due to hydrogen sulfide. Let us look at the role of metallurgy how it can affect the corrosion of the pipelines. I would like to look at metallurgy in terms of these parameters simply the chemistry of the steel what are the alloying elements added to it, the microstructures, what are the type of phases present, the morphology, the, the grain size, so they, they all constitute the microstructures. If this cold worked, deformed for example and so these are the, the factors we constitute overall we call the metallurgical factors. In this, interestingly, if the chemistry does not change significantly, even the microstructures would not affect the corrosion very significantly. However, there are cases we will see later that microstructures can affect the other forms of corrosion, the localized forms of corrosion. For example, let us take the uniform corrosion of the steels, not much effect as long as the alloying elements are not changed. Okay. But, when take when it, but when you look at the environmental assisted cracking we discussed before like sulphide cells cracking, hydrogen induced cracking or hydrogen blistering or hydrogen embrittlement, the microstructures significantly affect the integrity of the pipelines. The composition may play, the microstructures play a significant role in deciding the resistance of the pipelines towards cracking. We shall now move on to understanding the role of carbon dioxide and the hydrogen sulphide on the corrosion of the pipelines. The carbon dioxide corrosion is generally termed as sweet corrosion and the carbon dioxide, the dry carbon dioxide is not corrosive to steel. However, when it dissolves in water it forms a carbonic acid and the carbonic acid reacts with the steel and forms iron carbonate. The iron carbonate it reaches a saturation and forms a scale on the surface and the scale is a barrier for corrosion and so it offers a reasonable protection against corrosion. But this is the overall corrosion reaction between the carbonic acid and the iron but you can also look at the partial reactions that are involved in the corrosion process. The anodic reaction we call an oxidation of the steel is simply ion is getting into Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons and the predominant cathodic reaction is the carbonic acid is getting reduced to bicarbonate and then hydrogen gas is liberated. But the pH is going to be higher that happens in the, in the crude. The carbonic acid reduction reaction becomes very low. The predominant reaction in that case becomes the water is getting reduced to form hydroxide and the 
what hydrogen is liberated. Now it is very interesting to see how this reaction affects the corrosion in relation to the temperature. If you raise the temperature of the process fluid, then the solubility of iron carbonate changes. In fact, it becomes retrograde solubility. The solubility decreases when the temperature increases. So, what happens is on one hand the rise in temperature increases the corrosion rate, on the other hand the increase in temperature lowers the solubility. So, there are two opposing processes happening on the metal surfaces and so the corrosion goes to a maxima and then the corrosion drops. The earliest uh, uh, you know relationship between the corrosion rate of the steel and the uh, and the, the carbon dioxide and the temperature was given by Deward and Milliams and then later it was modified by Deward and Lords. The equation given here is an empirical relationship obtained by experimental uh, experiments carried out at the laboratory actually and you find it is the uh, it is related is inversely related to temperature and directly related to the carbon dioxide. Let us now look at the role of hydrogen sulphide on the corrosion of iron gas pipelines. As opposed to carbon dioxide, the hydrogen sulphide influences corrosion of pipelines depending upon the concentration of hydrogen sulphide in relation to the carbon dioxide. At very low levels of hydrogen sulphide at 60 degrees Celsius and above. Uh, carbon dioxide is, is, is very dominant and uh, hydrogen sulphide does not play any significant role in affecting the corrosion of the pipelines. However, if the carbon dioxide partial pressure is increased and if the ratio of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide to hydrogen sulphide increases beyond 200, 200 and if the temperature is below 120 degrees Celsius even the small amount of hydrogen sulphide leads to the formation of a phase called as mechanovite and uh, this is a stable phase forms on the surface and thereby lowers the corrosion of the pipelines. Should the ratio of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulphide decreases below 200 then this metastable film is formed in preference to the iron carbonate especially in the range of uh, 60 to 40, de 240 degrees Celsius and as a consequence the corrosion rate decreases. However, below 60 degrees Celsius and above 120 degrees Celsius that is in this range okay, the corrosion is accelerated due to the presence of hydrogen sulphide. The, the process parameter namely the velocity and temperature they have a significant influence on the corrosion of the pipelines. When the flow is close to stratification that happens when the velocity is less than 1 meter per second or if the velocity is quite large goes beyond 5 meter per second in both cases the pipeline suffers severe corrosion. In the case of stratification that is below 1 meter per second, the increase in corrosion rate is mainly because of the fact that the added inhibitors they do not reach the surface. And the additional reason is that the hydrocarbons which prevent the corrosion okay, they also reach less on the surfaces. Okay. The formation of a film of hydrocarbon lowers the corrosion. So, stratification lowers the tendency of the formation of hydrocarbon film on the pipeline surfaces. At a higher velocity of course, uh, you will have more tendency for the inhibitor to reach the surface so as the hydrocarbon. However, the velocity is significantly large, it damages the protective films formed on the, on the metal surfaces. When the flow is a multi-phase flow, 
it has got um, you know gas and as well as the uh, flu uh, as well as the liquid then even the 1 meter per second can cause the corrosion. So, depending upon whether it is a single phase flow or two phase flow the velocity has a significant role in affecting the corrosion of the pipelines. As we discussed earlier that the temperature has a very interesting effect. The corrosion rate goes through a maxima because when you raise the temperature the solubility of ion carbonate decreases. On the other hand the rate of any chemical reaction so as corrosion reaction increases with temperatures. So, when the solubility of ion carbonate decreases with temperature it has more tendency to form a scale on the surface. So, that retards the corrosion process. So, as a consequence the corrosion rate goes through a maxima closely about 100 degrees Celsius. Beyond 120 degrees Celsius in fact, it appears that the corrosion rate of the pipeline is independent of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The role of velocity changes depending upon it is a multi phase flow or, or a single phase flow. This equation that is given here the corrosion rate is related to the two parameters. The parameter CR corresponds to the slug frequency, the CR crude corresponds to the acid number of the crude. In addition to these parameters the partial pressure of carbon dioxide plays an important role and as well as the pressure drop gradient per unit length okay. and of course the temperature. Okay. The, the viscosity also plays an important role in deciding the corrosion rate of the pipelines. So, coming to this CR crude okay, which is related to the acid number of the crude. The acid number means it characterizes the acids present that is such as naphthenic acid they increase the acidity, acidity they bring down the pH of the crude and so the corrosion rate of the pipeline increases. So, we have looked at the, the chemistry of the, of the crude how it can affect the corrosion. The other factor that affects the crude oil pipeline is the microbial corrosion. Microbial corrosion is a big subject we will just briefly look at the three important microbes which are responsible for the corrosion of the pipelines. The anaerobic bacteria that is mostly the sulphate reducing bacteria it reduces the sulphate to sulphide it promotes the formation of hydrogen sulphide films on the surface or you can also have aerobic bacteria which can oxidize sulfur and hydrogen sulfide to sulfuric acid and so can increase the corrosion rate of the pipelines. There are other kinds of uh, aerobic bacteria and one among them is converting ferrous to ferric and another one is the manganese to permanganate. So, these are the predominant ones they affect the corrosion of the pipelines. Should there be ammonia present in any of these pipelines? then these bacteria called nitrifying bacteria they convert ammonia into nitric acid. So, the microbial corrosion is one of the uh, important forms of corrosion affecting the crude oil pipelines or oil and gas pipelines to be called in general. So, we talked about the, the oil gas pipelines the internal corrosion of gas pipelines are also equally important. In fact, uh, in the gas pipelines the 25 percent of the of the failures are related to internal corrosion of the gas, gas pipelines. So, the corrosion becomes very important. Not only that the capital cost of corrosion prevention is on about 10 percent of the project cost and 5 to 15 percent of the operating cost. That means, the internal corrosion of the gas pipelines are very important and that has to be addressed. One of the problems 
that occur in the gas pipeline is the top of the line pipelines. The gases uh, carry so water, uh, humidity for example and this humidity they settle on the top surfaces. And along with the humidity and if you have gases like carbon dioxide or hydrogen sulphide, they dissolve in this moisture, they dissolve in water. So, the moisture when they settle on the top of the uh, pipeline, the inner surface of the pipeline, then they become severely corrosive. And this becomes uh, even more severe if the flow is stratified, where, you know. So, and if the dew conditions favor, for example, if the temperature of the pipeline is lower, okay, so the condensation becomes uh, favorable, so causes more corrosion problem. One of the ways to control the top of the light corrosion is injecting inhibitors. The inhibitors will, will dissolve in, in water and then they deposit along with the gases. Uh, on the top of the line pipelines and lower the corrosion of the pipelines. Of course, making the gas dry is surest way to control the corrosion of the gas pipelines. However, that is not practicable because you want to make the gas completely dry, it is not very economical. And so, water is going to be present in the, in the pipeline. But however, if one can avoid hold up of water, a slugging for example, then the localized corrosion can be significantly reduced in the gas pipelines. Gas pipelines are known to suffer one form of uh, problem that is called black powder formation. The black powder formation in fact lowers the thickness of the pipelines. It also causes in you know erosion of the pipelines. These black particles when they dislodge from the surface okay, and they can erode the pipelines. In fact, these, uh, these gases when they are transported to some of the uh, units, industrial units, uh, industrial units can suffer significant erosion damages. And this black powder formation as I indicated before is mainly because of the water presence in the gas along with the carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulphide. The presence of oxygen of course, it becomes an oxidizer, it increases the oxidation or the corrosion of the metal. It is really hard to control unless you control uh, the water, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulphide and the oxygen content of the gases. The internal corrosion control of the pipeline involves these broad categories. Okay. As a metallurgist, a material scientist, you suggest good materials, but that is hardly not possible. Okay. You have seen earlier that all the APA grade steels, there is nothing in that that suggests that these steels can resist corrosion. So, the process uh, control is one of the most important one in controlling the internal corrosion of the pipelines. Now, the pH stabilization, right, you lower the pH, we know that corrosion rate drops, oxygen, reduction of oxygen content and the water removal. And along with that, adding the inhibitors, the corrosion inhibitors is a good strategy to do that. In order to reduce the microbial corrosion, the biocides are added. Where the corrosion becomes very severe, okay, the application of coatings is, is done. Okay. That is to increase the corrosion. There in fact, many cases people do cladding okay, that is with the stainless steels so that the corrosion rate can be really brought down. The other strategy as we discussed here is to keep the pipelines free from water accumulation. Okay and periodic picking of pipelines because any deposition that is taking place will induce underfilm corrosion or crevice corrosion okay. and monitoring corrosion is one of the most important ways of 
assessing the corrosion of the process fluid, whether you have added enough amount of inhibitors, whether the pH has been controlled, whether, whether the oxygen has been adequately scavenged, all can be monitored okay, indirectly using corrosion monitoring technique. Of course, in corrosion monitoring technique is a big subject. Uh, some of them like weight loss measurements cannot detect the instantaneous changes in the pH, oxygen content, water removal and there are the other techniques like uh, linear polarization probe you one can use uh, to determine the corrosion rate. Of course, the linear polarization probe is not applicable for uh, gas pipelines. Corrosion inhibitors are the most important part of our strategy for controlling corrosion, internal corrosion of the pipelines. And so, lot of techniques have been developed. It is not very easy to, to tailor a corrosion inhibitors. Unlike the, the normal cases like you add inhibitors to cooling water system, the developing inhibitors for oil and gas applications are very, very difficult, especially the crude applications very difficult because the corrosion occurs because of water, but the amount of water present is very small. So, the, the inhibitor that are, that are added to the process fluid should able to dissolve in water, but the fraction of water is very less in the crude. So, there are various strategies in tailoring the inhibitors and there are also different type of techniques to determine the efficacy of the corrosion inhibitors. I have just listed here some of these techniques and uh, for more details you can refer the uh, literature. Let me spend a couple of minutes about the role of metallurgy on corrosion of the pipelines. Stress corrosion cracking is one form of corrosion failures especially the if the inner surface of the of the pipelines can suffer due to the presence of hydrogen sulfide when you have hydrogen sulfide it facilitates the hydrogen entry into the material causing the problems such as hydrogen embrittlement and hydrogen induced cracking the metallurgy of this alloy is is very very important and uh, as you notice here this is the microstructure of, of a steel pipeline used for transporting the, uh, the refinery product between two cities. And very you know and very interestingly this pipeline suffered severe failure within a short duration of the commissioning mainly because the pipeline had features what you see here is, is the inclusions, the long inclusions which facilitate the hydrogen blistering and it is very difficult to overcome the hydrogen induced cracking if we are not taking care of uh, insulating a steel that is free from these kind of inclusions. So, in order to do this there are standard tests available NACE TM0284 in the year 2003, it describes the method to qualify a steel to avoid stepwise cracking or hydrogen induced cracking or hydrogen blistering. They are all referring to same kind of failure. And again there are calculations, I would not go into details, the standard that I have shown here can be referred to understand how one qualifies the material against stepwise cracking. There are three types of uh, uh, cracking parameters called crack sensitivity ratio CSR, crack length ratio and crack thickness ratios. They are all talk about how the material is susceptible to micro cracking. The stepwise cracking is nothing but you know colony of cracks appearing in steel because of hydrogen entry into the steel. Water is largely 
transported through pipelines and water is corrosive and uh, the problem with respect to the water pipelines is that it is not easy to modify or choose any kind of inhibitor to control the corrosion. To look at what makes the corrosion a given water, we shall now look at in, in this lecture we shall briefly look at what are the characteristics of water that influence the corrosion of the pipeline. The corrosion tendency of water can be predicted using two type of indices, the Langelier saturation index and the Reisner stability index. In both indices they use two parameters pH and pHs. The pH uh, is nothing but negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration and the PHS is given by this equation here. These two indices while they represent the corrodibility of the water, okay, what makes a difference between these two are that the Langelier saturation index can go from a negative value to a positive value whereas the Reisner stability index it has got only a positive value. So, otherwise both represent the same relationship between PHS and the pH. The table that is given here outlines the relationship between the LSI, RSI and the corrosion tendency of the water. We all know that whenever the water has a tendency to form scales right then it becomes non aggressive that means the LSI value is 2 and the RSI value is less than 4 the water has got scale forming tendency and so it is less corrosive. But as the LSI value becomes low and the RSI value becomes uh, higher you see that the scale forming tendency of the water becomes lower and it becomes mildly aggressive. And when a LSI becomes 0 and RSI lies between 6 and 6.5 and the carbon dioxide is just in a saturation level and the pipelines do not form the scales or the water does not form the scale and so the water becomes more corrosive. As the LSI value tend to become as the LSI value tends to become more negative the water becomes very aggressive because the calcium carbonate is not having sufficient concentration to form the scale. The other reason why these water pipelines fail is due to microbially induced corrosion. What I have shown here is one of the pipelines uh, corroded due to microbial uh, species present in the water. This was a raw water pipeline that was used uh, in Maharashtra actually which I have investigated personally and you see that inside microbes have been colonizing there and you see a lot of tubicles right and these are tubicles that if you see them very closely there are large tubicles and if you break open these tubicles the microbes present in that and inside these tubicles you have SRB sulfate reducing bacteria and outside this tubicle you have ion bacteria. So, both cause the corrosion of the pipelines. It is not only in the water pipelines, it also happens in pipelines that are used for uh, utilities for example okay. and the microbes are present. Uh, what is seen here is uh, a, a booster chiller pipeline okay, used for building utility due to microbial corrosion. You can see that there is a leak in the external wall you can see this here you open up and see the dark silvery kind of appearance indicative of uh, sulphate reducing bacteria. So, we have seen so far two aspects one is the corrosion of the oil and gas pipelines and we see a very briefly 
the corrosion related to water. So, before we close, we will summarize what you have seen so far. It is to be realized that the pipelines used in iron gas industries, that the APA grades, the chemical composition does not significantly vary and as a consequence they almost have same corrosion behavior irrespective of the grades of steels. However, these steels they vary with respect to stress corrosion cracking and hydrogen embrittlement. With respect to the process fluid, okay, let us say in crude or maybe gases, natural gases, the contaminants they decide the corrosivity of the crude or gas. These contaminants such as hydrogen sulphide, carbon dioxide, water, sulphur, oxygen, chloride, organic acids are responsible. Empirical relationships have been developed to model the corrosion of the pipelines. And corrosion in all these cases are mostly controlled by the addition of inhibitors and the biocides. And thank you very much.